You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. church. 
You know how easy it was for me to break this stick? Well, I gotta say, if I put all these sticks together, I can't even barely get my hands around them. I can't break them. I can't break them because they're stronger together. You know, that's the same with us when we talk about our faith and about trying to live out our faith and trying to be the people that God has called us to be. It can be hard for us to do it by ourselves. We need our, uh, we need other people to encourage us and support us and love us and help us with our faith. And, and that's what church uh, is for us. We come together and we live life together. We support each other and uh, we help each other grow. There is a verse in the Bible that uh, is Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12. I want to share it with you. It says, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. So, next time you think of, uh, as you're collecting sticks for something, maybe for a bonfire or something, just remember that, that lesson that, you know, by ourselves, you know, it can... We can stand alone by ourselves, but we can be easily broken, but together we're made stronger. Let's pray. Awesome stuff. Dear Lord, thank you for our brothers and our sisters in Christ. Thank you for the people who stand beside us and support us and encourage us in our faith as we live it out in our lives. Help us, Lord, to remember that each of us can be there for one another and that each of us has the power to encourage our friends, our family, our church, and in our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Well, friends, we reach that time in our service in which we turn to God's Word. I would invite you to uh, turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. We're going to be reading verses 12 to 17. So that's Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 17. Before we get too far along in our sermon here, we're going to pause for a moment to pray. So pray with me now. Lord God, as we prepare ourselves to focus on your word, we ask for your blessing. Help us to be open to your leading and, and guide us as we go through this time. We pray this in your wonderful Son's name, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we're going to continue on today in our journey in which we've been looking at the, some of the basic beliefs that we as Christians hold true. Uh, for this journey, we've been using the Apostles' Creed to guide us along our way. Now, if you've been with us throughout the sermon series, or you've caught one or two of the sermons that I've shared, you know that I uh, share a few points about the Apostles' Creed. And I feel it's important that we cover those each week in case we have people who are joining us for the first time. Not everybody knows what the Apostles' Creed is, so I'd like to explain what that is. And I'd like to explain why we're using the Apostles' Creed. So first, what is the Apostles' Creed? Well, the Apostles' Creed is like any other creed that you'll find in a church. Uh, it is a statement of faith. It is a collection of beliefs. And so that's what the Apostles' Creed is. Now, it's important to note that the Apostles' Creed is not Scripture itself. It doesn't replace the Bible. Uh, the Apostles' Creed is a tool that we can use to help us uh, understand better our, our, what the Bible says. Put it, it's great at condensing and articulating what we believe. It's also a great tool to use when someone asks you uh, what you believe. This is a great way to summarize some of the things that you believe in. So that's, uh, that's what the Apostles' Creed is. Again, it's not scripture in itself. It doesn't replace the Bible, and it doesn't replace our need to spend time reading and studying God's Word. Uh, it is just simply a statement of faith. Now, why are we using the Apostles' Creed versus some other creed? And, you know, there are other creeds out there. I've chosen to, for us to use the Apostles' Creed for two reasons. One, it's old, and it's about 1,300 years old. The Apostles' Creed has been studied and scrutinized and picked over, and it has withstood the test of time. It is as relevant for us today as it was when it was first written. So that's one of the reasons why we're using the Apostles' Creed. And the second reason we're using the Apostles' Creed is because of how universally accepted it is across all the churches, or so many churches, that are, are around, which is so encouraging. You know, we live in a day and age where we seem to focus very much on the differences that we may have. The Apostle, Apostles' Creed reminds us, when it comes to our faith, that we hold so many things tr that are true uh, in common. And that really encourages us, that when we're looking at others, just know that we are uh, together in our common beliefs when it comes to our faith. Awesome, awesome stuff. So, uh, throughout this sermon series, I've been inviting you to uh, recite the Apostles' Creed with me. And we're going to do that in a moment. I do want to point out, as I have done throughout this sermon series, about one of the lines in the Apostles' Creed. And I share this because this is probably the one I get taught, asked and comments about the most when it comes to the Apostles' Creed. And that is the line in which it says that uh, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I want to clarify for us that word Catholic, it means universal in this context. So we are saying that we believe here in the universal church, in which all Christians, no matter what local church that they may be a part of, belong to. So there you go. Enough with explaining about the Apostles' Creed. We're going to take time now to recite the Apostles' Creed. So join with me now as we do that right now. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, thank you for reading that with me. Uh, for reading the Apostles' Creed. Today I am excited because we're going to focus on one of my greatest loves. Now, if you know me, you know that I love a lot of things. But I gotta say, uh, this love that I'm talking about today is one that is very close to my heart, is very uh, dear to me, and that is we're going to be talking about the church. I love the church. And I hope you do too. Today we're going to be looking at the church and as we work through the line in the Apostles' Creed in which it says, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. So the Greek word for church is ekklesia, which literally means called out or called forth. Personally, I like that idea of called forth instead of being called out. Called forth. Throughout the books of the Bible, the church is referred to by many other names than the word church. Uh, some of them you're probably more familiar with. Others maybe not so much. But we're going to cover some of those. Uh, each of the names that uh, the church is referred to highlights a different aspect of uh, of the church and so it's really interesting to look at the names of the church in the book of Colossians and Philippians the church is referred to as a kingdom in the book of Hebrews the church is referred to as a priesthood um, in and uh, let's see what else here in um, first Peter the church is referred to as a flock in 1 Timothy, the church is referred to as a household. Uh, and in 2 Timothy, the church is referred to as an army. In the book of Ephesians, and again in the book of Revelation, the church is referred to as a bride. And, and in 1 Corinthians, as well as the book of Romans and Colossians, the church is referred to as the body. Interesting stuff. And as we will see in our scripture for today, the church is also referred to as God's chosen people. Keep these names in mind. As I quote scripture, you're going to hear some of them, and you'll know that it's referring to the church. And so with that, we're going to read our scripture for today. We're going to be reading first, and we're going to be reading Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 17, where it says. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. That the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. As I began my message today, and as I narrowed our focus to the Apostles' Creed, I reminded us of the word found in the Apostles' Creed, the word Catholic, 
and, and what it meant. And Catholic here in the context of the Apostles' Creed means universal. And with the help of the Apostles' Creed, we affirm our belief in the one and true universal church which all Christians are a part of. Yet for some, looking uh, from the outside, it can be hard to see the church being just one. With so many churches and hundreds of denominations, it's easy to understand why some may think that the church uh, isn't truly one. That they may think that the church is broken and that it is shattered into a million splinters. But the reality is, as imperfect and as divided as the church may look to the world, the only view that is truly important is the view that God holds of the church. Our scripture for today tells us that we are God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. God doesn't see us, he doesn't see the church as broken. But he sees us with love in his eyes as his chosen people. And in the same book of the, the, in, uh, that our scripture is taken from, the author of Colossians tells us that Christ is also a head, is the head of the church, which is his body. We are the church. You and I and all the people throughout this world who have placed their faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior, we make up the body, the one body in which Jesus, who is Lord of Lords, is the head. We are the church. We are God's holy people. The Apostles' Creed refers to us as the Holy Catholic Church. Last Sunday, we touched on this word, the word holiness. And let me remind you, uh, just uh, as I touched on it last week, let me remind you that holiness means to be set apart for God, to live for Him. In reality, many of us think that holiness means that we are to live beyond reproach as we follow uh, all of God's teachings and Jesus and follow of Jesus example which he demonstrated in other words we believe holiness means to live perfectly from this perspective of perfection we may think that the church has fallen short of its call to holiness my hope is that you have all had that perfect experience when it comes to church uh, that you have always felt loved, that you have always felt supported and encouraged in your faith, and that you have only seen the very best that the church can be. The reality is probably a little bit more mixed than that. I'm sure all of us have been touched by uh, acts of compassion and love in the church, and we have been encouraged in our faith by the church. But we probably also, unfortunately, have been uh, have seen some of the bad stuff as well. We've probably all experienced times in which we have been disappointed with the church. I am reminded of a remark one particularly insightful person shared, in which he said, "I love the church, but there's only one problem with the church." And that one thing is that the church is full of people. Yeah. You know, the church is a wonderful thing, but it is full of people. And people are not perfect. Truth be told, if we are being honest, we're not perfect either. We have probably failed to live up to the high standard of perfection that we sometimes expect from others. Can we truly say that we have always fulfilled our 
responsibility as members of God's church? Can we say with sincere hearts and with honesty that we have always clothed ourselves with compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, just as our scripture has called us to do? Can we truly say that we have always bared with each other and forgiven each other uh, when they, there are grievances between us? Again, these are some of the hot spots in which we sometimes trip over. This expectation of, per, of a perfect church all of a sudden gets a little bit more complicated once we remember that we must include ourselves when we refer to the church. When we say that the church is holy, we're not saying that the church is perfect. Oh, it's not uh, perfect by a long shot. You're not perfect. How many times have you had to hear a pastor say that? You're not perfect. I'm sorry if I popped your bubble. Guess what? Uh, I can testify that I'm not perfect either. And you know what? My wife would probably agree <laughs> with no time to think. Yep. I'm expecting in our live service for my wife to say amen to that. <laughs> We're not perfect. Neither you nor I are perfect. Uh, when we say that the church is holy, we are saying that the church belongs to God. The church is not part of this world. It was not created by human beings. It belongs to God. He made it. The church is His. It's not yours. It's not mine. It is God who has created the church. It is God who sustains the church. It is God who sanctifies the church. So we have seen so far today that the church is one. And we've also seen that the church is holy. But within the Apostles' Creed, in that statement of faith, we have, con have confirmed and we continue to confirm that we believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. What do we mean when we say that the church is, is uh, the communion of saints? The church in which we all belong to is in fact a great communion. A more modern way to put it is to say that we are a great community. We are all part of this fellowship, the family of God. We are not just a gathering of individuals who are disconnected from one another. We, as members of the church, are all uniquely connected. We belong to one another. In current times, uh, this connection that we share has been tested like never before. During this COVID-19 pandemic, we have been forced to look at how uh, we see church. And you know what? We have been reminded through all of this that the church is not a building. We were reminded that floods and fires and natural disasters and even a deadly virus can shut the doors of the buildings, but they can never shut the doors of the church. Here in Ontario, through this pandemic, which has lasted more than 18 months, we have had three lockdowns. And in all my years of ministry, I never once imagined that we would be forced to lock the doors of our facilities and stop holding in-person worship services. But we did. In fact, at one point, we, were clo we had closed the doors and we had canceled our in-person worship services for over two months. Yet the church never stopped being the church. Our community, our communion of saints found ways to worship God and to stay connected to each other. Without missing a beat, we began to hold online worship services, something only a few years 
earlier, I had shared with our church board, which was a dream of mine, that we would start reaching out to the online world. And now, we were doing it. I gotta say, my first video, and the first few videos in fact, were pretty rough. I was pretty uncomfortable staring and looking at a camera. I found a trick though. I actually picture people in my mind's eye, people who I know are going to be with us online. And I look at, and, at the camera and think of all of them. So there you go. Um, but they were rough videos indeed when we first started. Yet, the church encouraged me. I had so much feedback, so much positive feedback at the beginning of this pandemic. People just wanting to let me know that they appreciated my efforts in providing uh, an online service for them. And I needed that encouragement because I felt like I would, had two left feet when it came to doing this. But we didn't just do online worship services. Our church uh, formed connections and online. We were holding online Bible studies. Uh, we were doing things through Facebook. And, and people were connecting through things as simple as making phone calls and sending out emails and staying connected online in other ways and even sending out cards. You know, over this pandemic, I received uh, a couple of beautiful cards from people that I have tucked away for those days where I feel low and I can uh, pull them out and read them and be encouraged. And through all of this time, we have been reminded just how important these connections are. The pandemic has really put a magnifying glass for us on those connections and maybe sometimes we have taken those connections for granted, but we aren't doing that right now. We are reminded of how important they truly are. We are the church. We are the body. We are the bride of Christ, the church, the one church, the one church that is holy, the church that is the communion of saints. Thank God for the church. Thank God for each of you. And with that, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the church you created and for the privilege and honor of being able to call ourselves members of your church, of your family. We pray for the church and for its mission to share the good news and to equip your followers so that each of us can fulfill our calling that you placed in on each of our lives. Bless the church. Strengthen the church. Help us to grow and to mature and to fulfill our purpose. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Your mighty works display
Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you You open my eyes to your wonders and you You captured my heart with this love Cause nothing on earth